Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's understand the next two biasing methods in MOSFET that is drain to gate resistance biasing and using current source. In the previous video, we have seen two biasing methods, biasing of MOSFET by fixing the gate voltage. One is biasing using fixing VGS. Here VGS is directly fixed. That makes the device to operate differently, means with respect to ID in different temperatures. So this is not the good method to biasing. So we saw by using source resistance, we can compensate that variation in ID by varying the VGS. So these two biasing methods are not so suitable in all the cases. That's why the next biasing method we need to see is drain to gate resistance. In the biasing using drain to gate resistance, we have a resistance connected for drain to gate. You can see here, this is the drain terminal of the MOSFET. We will be having gate terminal here. In between, the resistance RG is connected. This RG will act as a feedback resistance. And we have VDD over here. And there is a resistance at the drain RD. And through that, the current ID flows. And there is a voltage at drain to source, we call it as VDS. This VDS and VGS is same here. Why? Because RG is connected in between gate and drain. But the current flowing through the gate will be zero here. Always in MOSFET, there will be no current flow to the gate of the transistor. Because of SiO2 layer present under the gate, it will not allow the current to flow in, in, into the MOSFET from gate. Since gate current is zero, this path is a short circuit between the gate terminal to the drain terminal. So that makes the voltage at the drain terminal will be equal to voltage at the gate terminal. We say Vg is equal to Vd because of the current in this path is zero. And we can say Vgs will be equal to Vds. Why? Because the drain voltage Vd is same as Vds since source is grounded. And the gate voltage and VGS is same since it is connected with respect to the ground. So VDS and VGS are equal. Because of VDS and VGS are equal, this transistor will always be in saturation. The saturation condition says VDS should be equal to or greater than VGS minus VT. When VGS and VDS are equal, always the transistor will be in saturation. It will be, VDS will be more than this condition itself. So by this way, the biasing method makes the transistor to operate in saturation region always. And because of VD and VG are same, we can write VGS is equal to VDS and it will be equal to VDD minus IDRD. Now by using this expression, we can calculate ID. ID is equal to VDD minus VGS divided by RD. This is the biasing current, DC biasing current flow through the transistor when it is in saturation condition or in amplifier mode. And here also if you assume if ID increases or decreases by any reason, what happens? If ID increases for some reason like for the temperature variation or any other reason, here VGS is variable, VGS will increase or decrease accordingly. So VDS also increases when VGS increases. So because of that reason, if ID increases for some reason, VGS will decrease and make ID to decrease again. So whatever the amount of current increases will come back because of variation in the VGS because of that. So here RG is the reason for that. RG provides negative feedback or the degenerative feedback we can say and it keeps ID is equal to a constant value. That makes the saturation current constant so the transistor will be stable as amplifier. Now the next biasing will be biasing using a constant current source. You can see this is the amplifier circuit where we will be biasing this transistor to operate as amplifier using a current source. This is the representation of current source and the current it will produce is I. Since it is connected in a source of the transistor, the drain current and source current are equal the current flowing through RD that is ID will also be equal to current I. So this is the first circuit is the amplifier circuit and second one showing the 
circuit for this current source. By using two transistors, this will be called as a current mirror circuit and this circuit will act as a current source for biasing the transistor. So in place of this current source, we can replace this current mirror circuit, it will be act as a constant current source. Now let us understand how actually this constant current source works. Let us assume this I reference is the current flowing through the resistor R. Now the same current will flow through the transistor Q1. Why? Because the gate of the transistor will be connected to the drain of the transistor through this way. Even if there is a connection between these two, voltages will be same means the drain voltage as well as the gate voltage of this transistor will be same and there is no current will go to the gates of these transistors since the MOSFET gate current will be zero always. So I reference will be equal to ID1 and because of the VGS is same as VDS because of this saturation condition the transistor Q1 will be maintaining its saturation condition of operation and now VGS is same for Q2 also and we are assuming that the Q2 will also be in saturation region. Because of the two transistors in saturation region and the dependency of these two currents will be on VGS itself and we can say these two transistors will be having same current because of VGS is common. So we can say this current mirror circuit mirroring ID1 to ID2, ID1 and ID2 will be same that is the concept of current mirroring. And now as I said this is the current source we have used over here. So we can connect the source of this transistor directly to the Q2 transistor over here. The dotted line indicating this amplifier circuit of the source of this T1 transistor should be connected over here. So the same current mirror circuit is represented with a constant current source in this first circuit. And now we can compare ID1 and ID2. As we know ID1 will be equal to 1 by 2 Kn dash W by L into VGS minus VT whole square. So this is the saturation region current equation for ID1. And as I said ID1 and ID2 are equal but the thing is this is different transistor and this is the different transistor and WL of means width and length of these two transistor may vary. If it varies because of that the current may vary otherwise if those are same the current ID1 and ID2 are same and then ID2 is a constant current we have this device will always be operating saturation region. This is what the biasing using constant current source and this will be the current mirror circuit. Thank you.